Hello and welcome to Monkey's Paper Palooza Craft Corner. Today we're going to switch gears a little bit and we're going to do more of a tutorial and tip on turnabout stamping. We talked about this earlier in my review of the stamping platforms about how I feel the We Are Memory Keepers Precision Plus is going to revolutionize these turnabouts. So I'm going to start by using a Conquer to Nine turnabout stamp. It is the wreath turnabout. And the key to these turnabouts is your setup. So what you basically do is you get these little starts of your things and you turn them around in a counterclockwise pattern and you make yourself a beautiful thing. So for the We Are Memory Keepers, I am going to make a copy of the back of this and I am going to cut it out so that I have these little squares. Um, usually you make a jig for any other stamping platform, but because I'm gonna be putting this in the center, I do not need to make a jig, but I'm gonna make a way for me to position it centered on the acrylic block. Um, you could cut your back if you wanted to, but I decided I'd rather keep that intact. Now, first time I tried, when I was practicing this, I did it wrong. I did it in the center, so I'm gonna show you the correct way. So I'm going to take a green Sharpie, since I used black last time, and I want to make sure I line this up right. So I'm going to line this on the little square. And you'll do this for, your, for using your jig too. Because I am going to show you how to do it on the Rear Memory Keeper and also on my Stamp Perfect slash maybe Misty, if you have a Misty. And also on the Tim Holtz Travel. That way you know how each one works because I know that not all of you have a precision press or may not be interested in a precision press. And I wanna show also how you do that on a regular. So the first we're gonna start with a reef one and then I'm gonna come in and I'm going to do the flower burst that we have. Uh, this kit, usually turnabout you get one turnabout stamp. This kit, which is the reef turnabout, has two. It has a kind of bouquet burst, and then it has the reef, which is kind of cool. You get two turnabouts for the price of one. Um, you can also get it with the die set that has a really beautiful little cutouts and dies that you can use. I'm freehanding these lines. You can do them with a straight edge if you don't feel you can do it straight, though it really doesn't matter. You're just going to be using them out as a guideline. So like I said, I just printed mine out on my printer, but this is another tip. If you are doing this on the Precision Press Advanced, I centered with a straight edge, two points, two on the top and bottom, and then two on the side. That way I can line it up on my grid on the back and make sure it's straight. And remember, this is only gonna work for the Precision Press you're still going to have to make your 6x6 six six jig that they recommend to make with your other platforms because you're going to need that as a guide point. But for the precision press, since we're going to have to make sure the stamp is in the center most place because we are not moving the paper, we are moving the stamp. We need to make sure it's centered in the center of the platform so that we can just move our acrylic block versus moving our paper, which is what you would typically do. So I did this only because I could then use that to center it on my three by three part, my three by three lines on the precision press and know that I'm centered. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm straight again and I'm gonna make the same thing on the reef one because honestly it does make it easier when you're trying to make sure it's straight and lined up so I'm just using my lines on my we are memory keepers glass mat to make sure everything's straight so that I know my design is straight I found this made it a lot easier when I was lining it up. 
So here is, of course, the presses and press advanced. And I kind of made a couple marks when I was practicing with it, but it's okay. We can wash it off with some alcohol. So I'm going to take, like I said, the three by three is going to be about center. So you're going to line this up at the three and then push this over to the three on the top. I was trying to make sure it was centered, but I think three by three is exactly going to be it. So let me just make sure. Yep, three, and then move that up to the three. Like I said, then you know you're centered on either. And then, of course, you can lay your magnets down when you feel you got it. Another nice thing about doing it like this with a cutout is now instead of having to line it out on the lines, I can line the stamp right out the way it shows on the picture on the, oops, if I can figure out where it is, there it is. I can line it up right about there. And I know it's pretty centered. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your precision glass mat in the right direction, not like me. And it's okay if it moved you don't even really need to keep it there after you get the stamp positioned where you want it. You really don't need this again. Now I am using a piece of cardstock that is four by five and three quarters. And so I'm lining this up at the one and the five on the top. So that way it's centered. And I know it doesn't look like it's centered, but because the way this stamp is set up, it will actually be centered. So don't be concerned if it doesn't look centered, it is, because it rotates. So the fun thing about this is you do not need to move your paper at all. Your paper will stay there. You do not have to rotate it. So you are going to rotate your acrylic block. So we're going to start with color number one, which I believe is the bamboo shoots. And I'm kind of doing a summary feel for this reef. The nice thing about this reef set is you can make it into any color pattern you want. If you want to make your pattern summery, you can make it summery. If you want to make it autumny, you can make it autumny. I've seen them do spring, summer, fall, and winter reefs with it, and it really is pretty. You can even heat emboss this too. So if you want to do a last layer that is, let's say, gold embossing, you can do that also. But you can keep on doing it. So the trick is here is to use your We Are Memory Keepers emblem on the bottom as your grid. So the first setting would be at the first. Now I'm going to go to the lower right corner. So I'm in the second position. And I use that as a tool to know what side I am. First would be lower left. Second would be lower right. Third would be upper right. And lastly would be upper left. So it's a great way to keep yourself thin. That's why I made sure that first one was down in the bottom. That way I know where I am position wise and for what color. So now I know that I am in the third, second position. So second position there because we're doing our second color, which was, I believe, the rose red. A rosebud, actually. I don't want to say rose red, it's rosebud. So now we're going to go for our third color, which is, I believe, lilac posies. And that's the fun thing, is you can do any color scheme you want with this. They have some really beautiful 6x6 six six ones, too. They're gorgeous geometric shapes. And you see, my emblem is in the top right now because I'm in the third color. So it's a great way to keep yourself straight as you're doing this. Um, I'll give you also a hint later on about how to do it with the jig. I didn't do it with the jig only because I didn't feel I needed to do it with the jig, but you can. All right, so I'm gonna wipe this down because the lilac posies is actually really dark and I didn't want to contaminate my blue. So we're gonna go in here and do, I believe this is the 
Is it the Bahama Blue? I believe it's Bahama Blue. And we're now in our last position, so let's make sure our We Are Memory Keepers is in that top left corner. And we're going to push it down. So if you've used Turnabout stamps, you know keeping track of where you are is important. And that usually you have to rotate the paper. This one, you do not. You rotate your stamp. Now there's also little extras added in the kit, including sentiments. But there's these little tiny things that you can add to embellish your wreath or your flower burst a little bit more. And they're tiny ones that you can just freeform stamp on there and make it more elaborate. There is that one. Now to show you the flower burst, we'll do the same thing. I'm going to line it up at three, three and three. And this time I'm going to take the paper off after I'm done just to show you, you really don't need it. Once you get your stamp lined up, you're good. That's the good thing about this. I'm going to have to put these out. I was going to put them in the center. I was like, nope, I have to put it out because the stamp's going to be in the center. Oops, it stuck to my bottom. All right, so once again, I'm going to line it up on there. And there it goes. You don't even have to really need those. It's just, you can use the picture. It's fantastic. Um, like I said, it's not hard to make a copy on these scanner printers now. Or you could even cut your basic one if you wanted to cut it. And there I am. I'm going to line it up. Just like I did with a reef. And like I said, you really don't even need to keep this on there. Once your stamp is in place, you don't. I'm gonna make sure I'm lined up. But I don't know why I'm even doing that because I don't need to. But like I said, you don't need it. As long as you know, your paper's gonna go at one and five. Now this is where, like I said, it would be so much easier for multiple stampings. If you are making Christmas cards and you need a stamp five of the same print this would make it easy because you never have to move the stamp you can leave the stamp on the block if you have multiple blocks you can do multiple stamps that's why it's great for layering stamps you don't have to move them around you can just leave them in place and keep on going just keep your put, putting paper in there and doing it now this one you can see i'm doing more of an autumn autumn color i'm doing i believe it is the cantaloupe First, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to push it down. And I know it looks like it's off center. A lot of people are like, wait, probably going, it's not centered on the paper. Don't worry. As it rotates, it will fill in all the spaces and be centered. And isn't that pretty? All right, so I feel like that's not very dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in one more time. This is another thing I like about this press. You can actually see me putting the color on because it's not off screen. Or I can just flip the plate over and show you. And we're gonna just push down one more time on that because there was some ink still on there. All right, so we're gonna go into our second color, but I just want to wipe that down. That's gonna be bamboo leaves again. And this is our second color, so we need to make sure our emblem is in the second location when we do this. So one, two. Isn't that pretty? I think that color is going to be good. So we're going to wipe it down. And here we're doing potter's clay. This is our third color, so we make sure we're in our third location, which is on the top right. And now for our last cover, which is going to be rhubarb stock. I was going to make cards with these, and I decided I just want to do a tutorial this time. 
and let you make your own cards with these. It's more about how to use these stamps on these platforms than making cards. So this is more of a technique video. And this is beautiful. And there you go. There's your little bouquet burst. And you could do this multiple times in different colors. You can do it. You don't have to move your your paper. It's going to be the same way every time because you got your stamp already placed. Now, if you don't have a precision press, this is what you need to do. You need to cut a 6x6 piece of cardstock that you can use this. This, of course, you can do on the other one with this because you're not lining up your paper, you're lining up your stamp. You're not moving your paper, you're moving the stamp. So you don't need this jig. But the trick for regular platforms, whether it be Tim Holtz or Misty or Stamp Perfect, is to make the 6x6 jig. So you're going to go to your corners with a straight edge and make an X. So we're going to start here and go all the way down. And then you're going to go in your corners again and make another line. And this is what you're going to line your little marks that we made on the stamp on. So we're going to start with the stamp perfect. And as you see, it does go over a little online, but it's not going to matter because the stamp is never going to be in those locations, just the paper will. So if you have a smaller misty, it may be a little tight also but it will fit so you will leave these in your bottommost corner or wherever you're putting your card in and the key is where you want to place your paper so you're going to center your paper on this jig so first thing we're going to do is we're going to line up our lines of our stamp so I'm going to take my green lines that I made, not the black ones where I goofed up. And we're going to line that onto the X. So now your stamp is in place. Stamp is going to stay put. Your paper is, going to want, is what's going to move, unlike in the other one. So I'm going to take a form, the same size panel as I used for the other one, which is a four by five and three quarters paper and I'm going to line it up in the center of that X as much as I can get it centered. So also at one and five if you're curious on the bottom. And I'm going to stick some paper. Some people do temporary adhesive on the back of it. I just put a piece of washi tape, double over and put it down. All right, so you're gonna put your magnets down. Make sure I'm gonna make sure all residues off my stamp for a minute. Just make sure it's really clean. And I think that's as good as we're gonna get. So this one I'm doing a very springy color. So I'm starting with um, the angel pink. I'm doing my first color. And of course, since it's so light, I'm going to do a second coloring of it. That's the nice thing about this brief stamp set. You can, like I said, use it for any holiday. Um, it's because reefs happen all year round. You can make it Halloween if you wanted. I don't know. Whatever colors you really feel fit your card. You can do it bright summery colors, springy colors. So there is our first color. I'm just going to make sure I get it all down because I feel like some spots were missing. Alright, so there is your first color. So now you're going to turn this counterclockwise one time. Now, a tip that they do recommend via Concord and Knife is numbering your 
platform and that way the number on your bottom left is the color you are doing so that way your first color would be on the bottom left your second color would be on the bottom left your third color if you need that to keep yourself in check so you know you're doing the right color order I mean it couldn't hurt I just decided not to because I pretty comfortable with them I'm just gonna go down and this is the sky blue I believe. And you see, it's lining up just the same. So now you're going to turn one more time. Thus the name Turnabout Stamps. You keep on turning them about. And next, I believe is going to be more bamboo leaves. I've used a lot of bamboo leaves in this video. It's a pretty color. It's not too dark and it's not too light. The perfect kind of leaf color. And there's your second color. And you're seeing how this jig makes it line up the same as it did with the We Are Memory Keepers. The only thing different is you're moving the paper, not the stamp. That's pretty much the only thing different. And you need a bigger tool to place your stamp and get everything lined up. So now is our last color in the four. And for that one, I'm using Sweet Plum. I almost used Lulu Lavender, but I thought it'd be too light. But this one is a really nice color too. Isn't that pretty? It doesn't look much different than the other one I did on the We Are Memory Keepers. The only thing different, like I said, is how you move your paper. So if you are a stamper who does a lot of turnabout stamps or a lot of layering stamps, this the We Are Memory Keepers might be a platform you might be interested in. I, like I said before, was very surprised how much I actually fell in love with it. I thought I was going to like the Tim Holtz and it was a total opposite. Because I was a little concerned about when I first saw it. I said, I don't know if it's going to be that good. And, and I'm actually really liking it. And that is that one on that. Now, if you own a Tim Holtz, here's your tip for that. You're going to use the same jig you just made for that Misty. Same thing. Six by six. And it's going to go in there. And this is the travel edition. One... This is a really good helpful tool for you to have because the Tim Holtz does not have any grids on the bottom. That was my one complaint I think about the whole platform is I really wish they had put some grids on the bottom. But I understand why they didn't. Because they tend to rub off and they probably didn't couldn't figure out a way to put it through. So you're going to leave your jig there. Like I said, line up your stamp on the corners like you did with the other one. And this is the reef stamp. So I am going to be making sort of a Christmassy color one now, just to show the semi-versatility you're going to have with the colors here. We are going to, once again, line it up at 1 and 5 on the jig. You do have your little rulers there. So you can line that up there on the rulers. Oops, I set on there. Yeah, let me try that again. I was a little off. Sometimes it's hard to line up when you're so far away from it. So I'm going to pull it a little closer and then I'm going to put it back into view for you. There we go. So one and five. I'm going to put your little... Magnets on. And we're going to start with the London Fog. Which is a nice, nice little gray-silver color. And we're going to push that down. I would also probably recommend for a crisper image putting a piece of craft foam down underneath it. That way, since I find when you use clear stamps with this, the impression's not as good as it would be with 
the other platforms only because I feel like the rubber stamps you have that foam in it so it pushes it down it perfectly because most foam cling mounts I mean rubber cling mounts have foam included versus clear polymers usually don't usually clear stamps probably not a bad thing to put some foam down on your Tim Holtz if you do have a Tim Holtz one just a suggestion I mean, you can do it without, but I feel it doesn't get as crisp of an image, and you have to do it multiple times. So now I'm going in with the bamboo leaves again. And like I said, we're in our second position, so second color. Like I said, we're going to keep on turning counterclockwise until we get a full reef. So we're going to rotate that one more notch. So now I'm going to take the rhubarb stock. We're going to go around here again. But yeah, like I said, you can also do this with embossing powder too. So if you want to add like silver embossing powder to a layer, you could you could have fun with this. All embossing powder if you really wanted to. It'd be a lot of repositioning your paper if you're doing it this way. Probably wouldn't be so bad if you were doing it with the We Are Memory Keepers. Uh, food for thought. Because um, you wouldn't have to keep on repositioning your paper in the right position. On the jig. Because you do have to heat set that layers. Um, so it would be a little bit more complicated. And this is Cottage Ivy, which is a darker green. And we're going to go along that. And sorry, you guys cannot see me stamping. I could flip this over, but I didn't want to have to keep on trying to put it on. And we are going to push that down. And I'm going to do one more layer of that. But you can see you're getting the same kind of design as you were doing with the We Are Memory Keepers. The only thing different, like I said, is the paper moving. Some people like having to move their paper 100 million times I think it's more fun and easier by doing it with this stamp but especially if you're doing multiples but look at that isn't that pretty that came out really good so very uh, completely identical to what you had with the other one the only thing like I said is different is you're moving your paper that's pretty much it now if you're going to compare this I honestly think this is easier to store with the stamp kit the little one versus this big one I may lose the big one a uh, little one I could stick it in the little pocket with them and always have them the big jig either I'm gonna end up making multiples of them and keeping them in each stamp packet because honestly if I put it in a drawer somewhere I'm gonna lose it but just a food for thought I really thought this really worked better for it and I think it's going to revolutionary turnabout stamps for people too. Because when you don't have to worry about your moving the paper wrong or messing up, and you can just move your stamp, it makes it a lot easier. Especially, like I said, if you're doing multiples. It revolutionary layering stamps because of that. The idea of having different plates. So if you can have a whole card set on two different plates, it's amazing. So you need the jig if you're doing it in this in any other stamping platform. Even the Stamparatus, you're going to need a jig. But for the We Are Member Keepers, you can make your own little separate jigs and keep them in there. And they're always being there. But you get the beautiful techniques in either way. Either way you do it. Um, there's no wrong or right. Um, if you want to invest in this, you can get them for like $20, $29. Plus coupons, sometimes $15. So not a bad investment if you do do a lot of that stamping. Not to say these are bad. I love them too. So whatever makes you happy. But that is the gist of how to use these stamps on these platforms. And I hope that helped you guys out if you are interested in turnabout stamps and how to use them. So like I said, you get two little pieces of paper you can keep in the stamp pocket versus one big jig. You're going to be sticking in a drawer somewhere and probably losing or misplacing or or getting damaged and you can always keep those with your stamps that way you know where they are all the time 
So if you like this video, we welcome you to watch the last upload, as well as a video specially curated just for you. And like always, we welcome you to click the subscribe button, subscribe, like, ring for notifications, and make sure to sign up for our newsletters where you'll get crafty sales as well as newsletters.